and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're in the Vigan and today we're going to look at waypoints. So we're going to talk a little bit about waypoint theory. Then we're going to uh, show adding a waypoint within uh, within the cockpit here. Then we're going to show a adding a return base waypoint. And then we're going to show converting one of the waypoints to a attack waypoint. And then we're going to actually uh, take off and navigate between the waypoints and look at the symbology we use for the navigation. So first things first, in fact, before we, before we get even get started, you can see the HUD, uh, the, the center of interest in our HUD is this line here, our navigation line and our dot in the center. That should really be in the center of the HUD glass here. Uh, some people, it works fine. Some people, it gets a bit bugged, like in, uh, in my vegan. And so what I do is I have to raise my seat to get it in the middle like that before takeoff. It's just something I do and something some people have to do. And just to show you how to do that, seat adjustment up and seat adjustment down are the ones you want for that. Okay, right. First of all, let's talk a little bit about waypoints or the navigation in the Vigan. So there are various types of navigation that a aircraft can use. It can use ADF, it can use ARC, it can use RSBN, it can use TACAN, INS, satellite, uh, all sorts of uh, different um, uh, methods of navigation have been used over the decades and we use INS inertial navigation system in the Vigan. So that is a system that's contained completely within the Vigan. There is essentially a box, uh, a glorified box of gyros in the Vigan. Um, so uh, some navigation systems communicate with the outside world, communicate with beacons and radio transmitters on the ground. The INS doesn't. Everything it is in the, co uh, in the aircraft basically. It doesn't communicate with the ground. So, uh, waypoints can be added either before the mission starts, in the mission editor if you like, um, that simulates the mission, uh, the waypoints being added on the ground. Um, they could also be added in the cockpit themselves, and we'll show that. A waypoint is basically a three-dimensional point uh, somewhere in the world, so it has a longitude, a latitude, and an elevation, um, and, and it allows you to fly from waypoint to waypoint, so waypoint one, two, three, and four, and you can navigate between those waypoints and that will take you on a certain path. So our little mission today is we start here at this base. We've already got a waypoint set uh, that I set in the mission editor. Now, um, I can't see it here, but just take my word for it, it's about there, and the elevation is set at, I think the standard is 500 meters um, above sea level. What we're then gonna do, so that's already set from the mission editor, what we're then gonna do is add another one in the cockpit and we're gonna add it somewhere about there so we're going to navigate to waypoint one then to waypoint two and then we're going to add a return base uh, waypoint technically it's not a real waypoint but um, it's near enough for, for our purposes um, of this base here where we're going to uh, end the tutorial uh, Novo so before we get started let's get ourselves we're, we're currently in nav mode. I've done a hot start on this vegan and let's put it in nav mode. Now nav mode is what you need if you want to actually navigate around the waypoints. But if you have nav mode turned on and you're on the ground for a long time, like we're going to be, it can corrupt the INS system and make navigation inaccurate. So what I do is turn it to BER, which I think is standby, uh, which is safe just while we're um, mucking around in the cockpit. The next thing is we need to add our data cartridge. So this adds the waypoint uh, that we've added in the mission editor. We're going to click on there. And next we need to load that data cartridge. So we're gonna to come to our data input computer here. Uh, ref loader, uh, reference longitude and latitude. In there, out there. So we want to input data, so we're gonna to go to in. 9099 and LS to make a confirmation and just wait until that turns to zeros. That means it's accepted the cassette and accepted the waypoint information. There we go. And don't forget to turn that out and as your standard uh, default position, we want to go to act pause there. Okay, so that is added our waypoint one that I set in the mission editor. Now to prove that, we're currently on LS. LS, if you kind of like, it's our original waypoint where we start. We start here. So if you like, it's our base. Um, Bravo one will be waypoint one that I set in the mission editor. So I click on that. And to prove that um, it exists, you can see the range to next waypoint has gone up to about 18 kilometers. Okay, so let's go back to here back to where we are now right the next thing we want to do is add a brand new waypoint from the cockpit here so if we head out here we know the waypoint wants to be here so if you look at the top left of the screen you can see some northing and easting longitude latitude so we're going to write that down now northing four four three three five zero easting three uh seven four 
two, one, four. I'm not going to worry about any elevation. Um, so we're going to add that new waypoint in back to ref longitude latitude input and we're going to just type in the coordinates now beware it's east first then north so easting is three seven four two one four and then the northing is four four three three five zero And then we're going to choose which waypoint we're going to put it on, which is going to be waypoint 2, B2. Okay, so we've now set that. Let's turn that off, back to our original position. And just to prove we've now got waypoint 2, we can click on waypoint 2 there. And you can see it's 25 kilometers, something like that, basically. Okay, set it back. Now, the only other thing we want to do is a return base um, uh, waypoint. So basically, if we go on the map, there are loads of bases out here. Each base has um, a waypoint stored in the Viggins memory for that base. Uh, so we need to just find the, the waypoint for Novo. So we're going to go to the cockpit. We're going to press right shift and K to bring up the kneeboard. Uh, then we're going to use the square bracket keys to cycle right through these pages until we find air bases. And then we're going to look down here until we find Novo. That's Novo there. The number in brackets is the reference code we're interested. 9003. Press K to get rid of it. And off we go. Same as usual. Reference longitude, latitude, input data, 9003. And this one, L Mal, we click here. Bosh. And that has set it. L Mal is basically not uh, one of these waypoints, but it's a home base waypoint. So we've set that to our um, home base, uh, sorry, our return base um, airfield. Okay. Um, and as usual, turn the input off and back to act pause there and just to prove to ourselves that it exists now we're going to click on that and you can see the distance to that waypoint is 21 kilometers we're kind of going around in a, an arc shape but that about ls which is where we're going to start right um what i'm going to do next is turn on on navigation mode now and you can see that gives us our hud instrumentation uh, let's have a quick talk um, about which instruments we're going to be using for navigation. We've got our HUD here, and we'll go through the symbology on that. We've also got artificial horizon here, and we'll go through the symbology on that. We've got the um, compass rows around the radar screen here that we're going to be using, and we've got the distance gauge that we've got here, and we've got the current waypoint selected that we've got there. Just a reminder, we're going to take off, we're going to navigate to waypoint 1, then waypoint 2, then return base waypoint there. So... Brakes on, mill power, second stage burner, and off we go. Rotate, gear up, check gear, and we're in business. Okay. So let's start looking at some symbology. Uh, so we've got our navigation line, or which is also doubles up as the horizon line, if you like, at the moment, um, which is this lateral line here with a dot in the centre. The dot is basically going to guide you to the selected waypoint. Um, since we've left our LS, our, our home base, uh, our starting base, it's automatically updated us to the next waypoint in the waypoint chain, waypoint one or Bravo one. Um, so the dot the, the steering dot if you like here is on the right side of the hud so it's telling us to turn right to get to the uh, waypoint okay also on the artificial horizon we've got information here we've got a azimuth um, line guideline here so because it's on the right it's telling us to turn right and we've also got a altitude guideline here and it's right at the top which means we need to go up to meet it because the waypoint is above us uh, we've got the distance to the waypoint here is 16 kilometers, as we've looked at before. We've also got uh, the azimuth um, to the uh, to waypoint one shown on the compass rows here. We're currently heading in this direction, 215 or something like that. And that yellow bracket there shows where we want to get to, uh, to get to the waypoint, about 250 or something like that. Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to turn right. Using our compass rows to get roughly on target, and there we go. So I've got a little bit more uh, symbology now. Pause. 
So you can see we're compass rows, we're on the bracket there, so we're good. Distance is now 15 kilometers. You can see our azimuth line on the artificial horizon is now on the center, showing that we are on track for waypoint one. If we look here, that essentially, that dot is waypoint one. So as long as we put our path vector, that circle on that dot, we're heading towards it. Um, now this is a horizon line essentially, so it stays at the horizon. Um, it doesn't tell us uh, the height of the waypoint. What it does tell us is these vertical lines here. They're funny looking lines, but um, they do their job basically. So they are currently um, pointing, they're currently amassed basically above the horizon line at the moment. And that means that the waypoint is above us. Um, if it was the opposite, if they were dropping off the bottom down here, as I'll show you later on, it would mean that the waypoint is below us. So that's how it's telling us what elevation to get to. And like we looked on the uh, artificial horizon here this is just telling us that we need to go up so the next thing we need to do now we're on azimuth is gain altitude burners on and we can just um one annoying feature about that navigation line following the horizon is that when you point your aircraft up it disappears really annoying uh, but it's okay because we've got backup instrumentation we'll use the artificial horizon now Okay, that line's come down and there we go so we're now above it you see the line the uh, vertical elevation guideline is now below us because we've accidentally gone above the waypoint altitude and you can see also these lines here they've come all the way down and drop past the bottom of this um, nav vertical navigation line now so that's telling us we are above the waypoint we've also got some um, some, more, uh, some other information here I forgot to say we've got the altitude here in meters 540 we've also got the distance to the waypoint once we get to within i think it's 10 kilometers let me check uh, maybe 10 or 11 or 12 something around that we get this um symbology here this is a ranging line uh, we're essentially in the center this line will shrink in its width and when it gets to the very smallest bit like right on us there then we're basically really close to the website so as we close in this is going to reduce in width so what we're going to do now is try and get the right elevation so we're going to head down just a little bit, watch the vertical lines, and we want them to meet the horizon navigation line. That means we are on a perfect altitude. And there. So you can see those vertical drop lines, uh, vertical elevation lines are now basically just kissing the bottom of the horizon line. That means we are at the correct altitude. And we can also confirm that. I don't know if you can see that. Is that line there? is the one on the artificial horizon it's crossed basically now central right in the middle so we're on azimuth and we're on elevation um, you can see the distance line now decreasing and the distance there decreasing five kilometers slightly high whoops i meant slightly low my bad and we're about to hit it we're about to hit it and there we've hit waypoint one pause so it's updated itself now of course we've um, finished waypoint one it's updated itself in the chain to waypoint two there um, and we're just going to repeat the process so it's telling us it's 10 kilometers away we're going to follow the the uh, guidance dot there we're going to follow the azimuth uh, line there i think it's going to be the same altitude as the last uh, waypoint so let's go and follow it burners on and chase again we've got the compass rows and the yellow bracket we can use And there she is. So we're above, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, we're above uh, the waypoint at the moment, so let's head down. Five kilometers away, you can see the range line decreasing. We're bang on elevation now, we're just gonna close in, watch that range line decrease. And wait for it, wait for it. At perfect 500 meters. And it's changed again. So now it's changed to L1, Lima 1, which is our return base that we set, which is not the same base as we, we took off from. We took off from over there. We set our return base to this one, Novo, with the code 9003, I think it was. And because we've reached the end of the chain of waypoints, it selected it automatically, and we're just going to repeat the process. Now, it's not going to um, guide us down to the ground. We would use our TILS system for that. Um, it's just going to guide us to the, the airport, the airfield geographically. So that's burner on. Look at all our usual symbology. So we'll, we've increased altitude, so we're way above, uh, way above the waypoint at the moment. Eight 
eight kilometers. Trying to lose some altitude, there we? Whoops, there we go. And we're pretty much bang on altitude there. And you see the range line decreasing, all the same stuff basically as last time. And we're about to click over that. Four kilometers. And we've done it. So that is the end of our trail. We, if we look down, we should be directly over the airport now. Or, yeah, near enough. Um, so that's that one thing to show is that you don't have to let it select the um, waypoints automatically. You can select them manually. If you want to go to waypoint two, we can go there. You want to go to waypoint one, you can go there. You want to go to the original base, you can go there. I think that works. Um, and so on and so forth. Now, the only thing I forgot to show is how to set uh, waypoints to a uh, attack waypoint. So if I wanted to attack something, I would want to set one of these waypoints to an attack waypoint. So I'm just going to put myself on autopilot now. Right, very easy, Every, like everything in the vegan, super easy. So we're going to go to ref, longitude, latitude, input. And you can do this in the air, that's no problem. Uh, we've got nav mode turned on, that's fine. Um, we're going to, sorry, no, I did that wrong. Let me try that again. We're going to go to tact. If we want to set something to do with attack, we're going to go to tact here, or tactical uh, input. We're going to press 9. That sets a item, a waypoint to an attack waypoint. Uh, let's make it waypoint 1. And that's it. It's set waypoint one as an attack waypoint, and we can prove that by clicking on waypoint one now. And you can see it no longer says Bravo one; it now says M one, military one. So that is an attack waypoint um, that we would use to go bombing, firing rockets at, or whatever. Okay, um, that's all I could think about uh, talking about waypoints. I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.